Hello, everyone. My name is Sharon Sugarman, and I'm the Director of Research and Evaluation with Public Health Institute's Center for Wellness and Nutrition. I'd like to welcome you to our webinar today. To begin today's webinar, we'll start by introducing the organizations involved in this project, as well as the speakers for today's presentation. Then we will provide a brief description of the Food Navigator pilot before diving into the methods and findings from this formative evaluation, which included assessment using activity logs, environmental observations, consumer intercept surveys, vendor surveys, and key informant interviews. This will lead us to our recommendations for next steps for this project, and finally, we'll open it up for questions and discussion. Please type all questions into the Q&A box on the right side of the screen at the bottom. Please contact WebEx support for any technical difficulties you may encounter during the presentation. Their contact information is provided on the screen, and we have typed it into the chat box for your reference. This project was developed by the Michigan Fitness Foundation and implemented in partnership with the Michigan Farmers Market Association and the Public Health Institute. Michigan Fitness Foundation's USDA-funded StatEd program funded the program. Michigan Fitness Foundation contributed to the design, implementation, and evaluation of the project. Project design was operationalized by the Michigan Farmers Market Association, while PHI focused on evaluation. Today's speakers are Sharon Sugarman, Sydney Devin, Kylie Gallington, and Susan Ryan Ivara. First, Sydney from the Michigan Farmers Market Association, known as MIFMA for short, will describe the Food Navigator pilot program. All right. Um, okay. So I uh, thank you everyone for um, registering and participating in this webinar. My name is Sydney Devian. I'm the Food Access Coordinator for the Michigan Farmers Market Association. Um, and I'm just here to give a brief overview of the Food Navigator pilot program. So the pilot program began in uh, 2016 in Michigan, um, in May, we had uh, seven participating farmers markets. Um, three of those were year-round, four of them were seasonal, and we had uh, six food navigators in the seven markets. One food navigator uh, per functioned at two, two markets that were um, relatively close geographically. So these are the, the markets that participated in 2016. Um, Adrian, Detroit Eastern Market, the downtown Saginaw Farmers Market, Flint, uh, Fulton Street in Grand Rapids, um, Lapeer, and Kalamazoo. And so all of these markets are basically in the lower half of the lower peninsula in Michigan um, and kind of spread out from east to west across that in the state. So why did we want to have food navigators at markets? Uh, well, farmer's markets can be intimidating for new, um, new shoppers, uh, especially um, shoppers who use food assistance benefits um, and because there are multiple food assistance programs at those markets. Um, it can be an unfamiliar setting. It's different um, that those benefits and programs work differently at markets and they do in grocery stores. Um, it's a new way to shop for groceries. Um, things are much more seasonal. Um, there are strange looking versions of fruits and vegetables. Um, and so it can be kind of an intimidating place um, to go. And every farmer's market is different. And so if you have one farmer's market that you've been to, that doesn't necessarily mean that the farmer's market that um, is maybe like 10 miles away is the same. It can be a completely different setting. And as much as they want to, market managers can't always be a guide to the market. They have a lot of other responsibilities and they don't always have time to take a new shopper who is, you know, not very confident around and meet all the vendors and, and talk about all of the ways that they can make the most out of their food dollar. 
And we also wanted to enhance local partnerships and uh, build, build those partnerships between the market and, um, and those uh, community partners in the area. So our goals for our program participation were connecting uh, SNAP eligible uh, customers to, to markets and helping them, again, feel comfortable using, using that market to access healthy foods, um, increase their knowledge and their skills in how to use that food, and really make the most out of the food dollar that they have. Uh, so some of the responsibilities that the navigators had were to introduce new shoppers to uh, the farmer's market, to specifically to support shoppers using food assistance benefits, but we, we didn't limit um, the navigators to only helping, helping those shoppers, so that was certainly a focus. Uh, connecting the farmer's market to existing snap -ed programming and partners, um, and, and again, laying groundwork for long-term partnerships and building those relationships. And they had to organize a nutrition education activity at least once a month, but um, the, mar the, the navigators were in the market um, weekly, and so often they had at least one uh, nutrition education activity a week, but the minimum was once a month. And they were uh, uh, to support and participate in all of the evaluation efforts that took place um, for this pilot. So like I uh, mentioned in the previous slide, uh, part of the requirement and responsibility for food navigators was around nutrition education. Um, these activities um, can utilize Michigan Harvest of the Month resources. Um, and at least one of those activities um, that took place at least once a month had to utilize Michigan Harvest of the Month um, resources. And so uh, specifically for Michigan Harvest of the Month, uh, those nutrition education activities were things like recipe samplings and cooking demos, um, scavenger hunts around the market using um, resource packets, uh, seed investigations, um, plant investigations, um, those sorts of things. And then, you know, outside of Michigan Harvest of the Month materials, um, navigators were uh, very creative in, in finding their own ways to, to uh, do those nutrition education activities. I know one did a um, demonstration on how to uh, make a bunch, of, a bunch of freezer meals ahead of time using a, a, uh, products from from the farmers market, and so there were all sorts of all sorts of things that the navigators did. But there was certainly a focus on Michigan Harvest of the Month resources. So again, in terms of building partnerships, there was a focus on SNAP Ed partnerships, and and there are a lot of different ways that um, those partnerships could uh, take place. One was bringing programming to the market that wasn't um, previously at the market. Um, if there was already snap -ed programming at the market, it was coordinating with existing events at the market and making sure that the work that those two programmers were doing, because the Food Navigator is essentially a snap -ed programmer, were not duplicating efforts and were really working together to help um, as many um, SNAP-eligible customers as possible. Uh, creating new snap -ed events, um, working with partners to, to create a completely new event, um, and, and as well, again, uh, children's activities and cooking demonstrations. All right. The social ecological model is a theory-based framework that builds on the idea that behavior, including eating behavior, is influenced by levels of support. The Food Navigator pilot examined the intervention at all four levels of the social ecological model. At the individual level, there is the direct influence of what Michigan farmers market consumers actually eat. At the environmental level, we examined factors such as the partnerships MIFMA was able to engage in, the nutrition supports the project brought to the farmers market, how the Michigan Fitness Foundation social marketing messages were employed, and the types of challenges the project experienced. 
the agricultural sales factor represented the more global sectors of influence level, while health beliefs reflected overall social and cultural norms. The social ecological model is built into the national SNAP-Ed evaluation framework for nutrition, physical activity, and obesity prevention indicators. Each of the 51 indicators has several specific measurable outcomes associated with it. Michigan Fitness Foundation, MIFMA, and PHI work collaboratively to select a set of framework indicators to guide anticipated outcomes for this study, some of which will be examined as part of this presentation. Today we'll look at outcomes in particular from the individual level changes indicators, the environmental indicators for readiness and needs and partnerships, as well as adoption and promotion indicators for nutrition support. This was a mixed methods formative and process evaluation. Quantitative measures included activity logs of navigator activities, consumer intercept surveys, vendor surveys, SNAP benefit redemption data, and feedback surveys about various aspects of the intervention. Key informant interviews of stakeholders and environmental observations of the seven markets were the qualitative measures. Next, Kylie will tell you about the findings from some of those measures. Thank you, Sharon. Now we will be presenting the methods and findings from our evaluation. First, we designed activity logs to track food navigator activities, including the number of hours worked and the number of consumers assisted at each farmer's market site. Food navigators also tracked weather conditions which may impact farmer's market attendance. The activity logs were completed weekly by each of the eight food navigators. On average, food navigators worked 5.4 hours and assisted 25 consumers per day at the market. In total, 6,196 interactions were recorded between food navigators and consumers. Note that we could not track unduplicated consumers for this project. Environmental observations were also conducted using a standardized assessment form that was completed by trained staff during visits to the market. The environmental observation included questions about the farmer's market facilities and conditions, number and types of vendors, food navigator activities, nutrition education materials and activities being used, nutrition supports, and food assistance payment options offered, such as SNAP. Six observations were completed at six different markets. However, pre and post observations were not able to be completed, and therefore we could not track changes over time. The observations were conducted late in the season and not always when the food navigator was present. As a result, not all intervention activities were observed. Instead, intervention activities were reported through key informant interviews with food navigators, MISMA staff, market managers, and SNAP-Ed partners, which will be discussed later. Consumer intercept surveys were administered in person on tablets by trained interviewers at farmer's market sites. They were designed to assess consumers' exposure to the Food Navigator experience and other Michigan Harvest of the Month activities, use of payment options such as the Michigan SNAP Bridge Card and other fruit and vegetable bonus programs like Double Up Food Buck, recall of Michigan Harvest of the Month and they learn from watching you social marketing messages, fruit and vegetable consumption, self-efficacy and attitudes about shopping for fruits and vegetables from the farmer's market, and health beliefs about fruits and vegetables, as well as background and demographic information. In total, 34 respondents completed the survey from four of the participating farmer's market sites. Consumers were screened and surveys were only conducted with low-income adult consumers. A $5 cash incentive was offered to all respondents. Diving into the consumer intercepts findings, 82% of consumers surveyed reported that purchasing fresher produce was a top reason for coming to the farmer's market. Additionally, between 21 to 24% of consumers surveyed reported that supporting local farmers, better prices, and a friendly atmosphere were also top reasons for coming to the farmer's market. 
74% of consumers surveyed indicated that the primary purpose of their trip to the market today was to purchase fruits and vegetables. 91% of consumers surveyed reported that they ate more fruits and vegetables as a result of shopping at the market, which included eating a little more, more, or a lot more fruits and vegetables. Almost one-third, or 29% of consumers surveyed, remembered hearing about Michigan Harvest of the Month from a food navigator, and slightly more than a third, or 38% of consumers surveyed, remembered receiving Michigan Harvest of the Month materials, such as recipe resources, during a visit to the market. 41% of consumers surveyed remembered seeing signage about they learned from watching you at the farmer's market. And now I'll turn it over to Sharon to discuss the metrics from the SNAP-Ed Interpretive Guide for the Consumer Intercept Surveys. MT1C and MT1D are individual behavior change measures. They relate to variety, since that is one of the dietary guidelines for Americans' goals. MT1C talks about whether or not an individual usually eats more than one kind of fruit. And 91.2% of respondents to the survey reported that they did so on a typical day. 100% of consumers surveyed reported eating more than one kind of vegetable. This seems quite high. On the other hand, these were people who were shopping at the farmer's market, where there are a great many fruits and vegetables. So perhaps this is not a startling finding. There are limitations to the consumer survey. It was a low sample size of 34, primarily due to collecting surveys late in the season when few consumers were present, and we were not able to collect from all market sites. There were other evaluations being conducted in certain markets. And so market managers did not want us to come to all markets. Due to small sample size, this sample is not a representative sample. Suzanne is now going to discuss the vendor survey. Thank you, Sharon. So we conducted surveys with vendors at six of the farmer's market sites. These surveys were self-administered pen and paper surveys and they were distributed to all vendors at six farmer's market sites on one day at each site. So about 50% of the vendors at all the markets completed and returned the surveys to our data collectors. The purpose of these surveys was to evaluate the extent of the vendor's interaction with the navigators, their perception of the navigator's effect on consumer purchases of fruit and vegetables, the effect, if any, the experiential nutrition activities had on their sales, and their attitude about low resource consumers and their use of supplemental nutrition assistance resources, such as the SNAP Bridge card, WIC vouchers, and Double Up Food Bucks. Now I'll talk about some of the findings from the vendor surveys. About half of the vendors surveyed reported at least one personal interaction with the food navigator at their market, 42%. The most common interaction vendors had with the food navigator was meeting her and hearing her explain her role, about 71% of the vendors, followed by having food navigators bring consumers to the vendor's booth to explain how to use their SNAP bridge card or double up food box to purchase fruits and vegetables. 36% of vendors reported that. When we asked the vendors what effect they thought the Food Navigator had on fruit and vegetable sales at their farmer's markets, about one quarter of the vendors who completed the survey believed fruit and vegetable sales at the market increased due to the presence of the Navigator at the market. No vendors thought sales decreased due to the presence of the Food Navigator.
The majority of vendors who completed the survey either strongly agreed or agreed that the process of accepting food assistance and getting reimbursed was worthwhile for the additional sales that he or she gained. About 72% of vendors agreed with this statement. And most vendors agreed that they would like to have more consumers who use food assistance. Again, about 72% of the vendors agreed with that statement. So another data collection method we used in this project was key informant interviews. These were conducted over the phone by trained PHI evaluators. To identify key informants, um, we worked collaboratively with MISMA, who helped us identify food navigators, market managers, MISMA staff members, and SNAP-Ed partners to be included in our key informant interview sample. The purpose of the key informant interviews was to gather insights, feedback, and recommendations on the program. And as we mentioned earlier, they also supplemented some of our other data collection activities, including the environmental observations. So the key informants expressed high satisfaction with the services provided by the food navigators at farmers markets, namely talking about assisting consumers in using their SNAP benefits and providing nutrition education. Market managers said that food navigators allowed the market to better serve consumers' needs and attracted more customers to the market. For example, one market manager said that the food navigator's presence helped the market to achieve its goal of increasing nutrition education programming that the market could not normally do due to limited resources. Another market manager said that it was very helpful to have the food navigator here at the market to explain to consumers about EBT. We switched last year from a pilot of the electronic EBT back to a token system, and this was confusing to consumers. Another market manager announced the food demos on Facebook that the food navigator would be, product, uh, would be conducting in advance. And this market manager felt that this brought more consumers to the market than would have otherwise attended. The food navigators reported that the most popular Michigan Harps of the Month materials used at the markets were recipe resources, including recipe cards and cookbooks. To supplement Michigan Harps of the Month materials, the navigators used innovative and creative ways to incorporate Michigan Harps of the Month materials into the farmer's market setting, as Sydney pointed out earlier. We also heard about these innovations during the key informant interviews, including several examples, such as adapting the harvest of the month materials to make seed-to-table posters relevant to the market setting and hosting scavenger hunts at the market. Now Sharon will discuss the interpretive guide metric findings from the key informant interviews. One of the interpretive guide measures is readiness and need. We used a qualitative approach through key informant interviews to understand the level of readiness of market managers to engage in this work. Market managers expressed readiness to have the food navigators help consumers understand and use their SNAP benefits, as well as conduct nutrition education activities at the market. They expressed that there was a need for help in both of these areas. They wanted to do more in these areas, but they didn't have the time. Food navigators allowed the market to fulfill these needs. Key informant interview results also indicated the level and types of activity of local partnerships. MIFMA coordinated monthly check-in calls to provide technical assistance to food navigators and allowed cross-collaboration, which helped food navigators replicate successful events and activities performed by their peers. Relationships were forged with seven partnering farmers market sites and associated farmers market staff and vendors. Resulting in food navigators delivering promotional activities related to nutrition education and food assistance outreach, which reached SNAP-eligible customers. 
SNAP-Ed funded organizations included the organizations that sent SNAP-Ed nutrition educators to take part in farmers market activities. And these activities were initiated to increase or improve nutrition educated programming in the farmers market setting and the educators provided feedback on their observations regarding the Nutrition Navigator project. Another key metric is the MT5 metric of the nutrition supports adopted, and this is a key policy systems environmental change metric. It looks at the adoption and promotion of the total and different types of adoption and promotion PSE changes and complementary promotion that improve access and promote healthy eating in a given venue. The project itself is an innate, is an innate PSE change with the following components being piloted. Farmers Markets participated in the Food Navigator pilot project and hosted a Food Navigator and the materials associated with programming activities. So there were a total of seven overall Farmers Markets participating. In terms of policy changes, there was one significant policy change. NISMA staff created a policy that all food for nutrition education activities such as recipe demonstrations or food tastings should be purchased at the market if possible. In terms of system changes, the introduction of the nutrition navigator into the market is itself a systems change, as is distributing Michigan Harvest of the Month materials and hosting food demonstrations for a total of three systems changes. And in terms of promotional efforts, the point of purchase pop-up tables, signs, and sandwich boards are the overarching promotional change that occurred as part of this project. A key will be the sustainability of these components over time. Suzanne will conclude with the next steps anticipated for this project. Thank you, Sharon. So our evaluation contributed to these next steps that we uh, will describe here. First, um, the next steps for the Food Navigator program are that it should be continued and expanded to other markets in Michigan as SNAP-Ed funding allows. Also, the Food Navigator program model could be used as a successful program to adapt for use in other states. One key role that was planned for the Food Navigators during the last pilot project cycle was to conduct community outreach activities. However, we discovered as we implemented our evaluation um, that this could be an area that would be prioritized during the continuation of the pilot project in the next phase. We also learned during the pilot that the recipe resources, which were very popular with consumers, could be improved and adapted to the market setting. For example, some current recipe resources use ingredients that are not all available in the same season, which makes it difficult to purchase all the ingredients at the, at the farmer's market. Moving forward, it will be important as well to track unique customer interactions. This would allow for a more thorough evaluation of activities and effectiveness. Some additional next steps um, include developing promotional materials. These promotional materials are things like brochures and talking points that should be developed that describe the role of the food navigator the role of the market manager and the role of the SNAP-Ed partners that could be shared with program partners to improve understanding of the Food Navigator program and expand opportunities to collaborate with SNAP-Ed partners throughout the communities where the Food Navigators work. Partnerships with SNAP-Ed nutrition educators should also be strengthened to improve nutrition education programming in the farmer's market setting. 
Also, communication and engagement with market managers and vendors should be improved to enhance on-site support of the food navigators and improve implementation of the program. The promotional materials, such as the brochures and talking points I described earlier, could be helpful in achieving this improved communication and engagement in a way that does not require additional time commitments from market managers and vendors. Lastly, further evaluation is needed to assess outcomes related to nutrition behaviors and food resource management, including things like food security and food shopping, that may be associated with the Food Navigator program. So that concludes our structured webinar for today. Now we'd be very happy to answer any of your questions, and we will now open it up for questions and discussion. Please type your questions into the Q&A box on the right-hand side of your screen. So let's see, the first question is, what is Food Navigator? Um, so um, that was something that Sydney discussed, um, and we can let her answer that now. Okay. Um, oh. uh, so a food navigator is uh, a person who is from the community that the, that the, the, the farmer's market is located in, it in and the farmer's market um, is, that has a food navigator is located in a SNAP-Ed eligible census tract. And so the navigator is there to it's a community member who is who's there to help um, all customers, uh, specifically uh, SNAP customers who are new to um, the market, um, feel comfortable at the market, make the most out of their benefits and out of their, their food dollar. So that's kind of a really brief um, overview again of, of kind of what a food navigator is and, and what they're there to do. Okay, so thank you. So the next question is, how many of the customers that the Food Navigators interacted with were SNAP recipients? And I'll turn it over to Kylie to answer this. Yeah, absolutely. So all of the locations um, where the uh, Food Navigator pilot took place were SNAP eligible locations, um, so they were income qualified. And we did ask consumers um, which forms of food assistance they received. Um, off the top of my head, I don't unfortunately have the number in front of me, but I believe it was around 85% of respondents who answered that they were receiving SNAP. Um, that said, it was a screening um, question to qualify to participate in the survey um, that a respondent had to be receiving some form of food assistance. So if they weren't receiving SNAP, they were receiving a related program such as WIC, or um, a form of senior food assistance, among others. Um, so the next question um, wants a little bit more information about a basic description of a food navigator. Is it a person, a computer program, and where do I get one for my farmer's market? Um, very good question. Sydney, would you like to provide a little bit more of information on that? Sure. Sure. Um, so again, a food navigator is a, a person, um, and so in order, so in so currently, this 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 program is uh, only in Michigan, um, and in order to have this program at your market, there are a couple requirements. First, your market needs to be located in SNAP-Ed eligible census tract. You can, uh, and there are, uh, there's a website called Map to Healthy Living um, that you can, where you can look up your market. Secondly, your market, because this is a SNAP ed program, your market needs to be accepting SNAP. And then ideally after that, your market would also be accepting um, Double Up Food Bucks, uh, and Senior Project Fresh, Market Fresh, Slash Market Fresh, and, and WIC Project Fresh. Um, and so, and, and so that's 
kind of the market's eligibility requirements for the to, in order to have a a food navigator at the market. Thank you, Sydney. Mm -hmm. So the next question is, did all the markets use a token script system for SNAP? And was there any data on SNAP redemption methods went up as a result of the intervention? Um, so Sydney, I think I'd like to give you a chance to answer this one and then we can jump in here if you like. Sure. Uh, so as far as the token script system for SNAP, um, all of the markets except for the Flint Farmers Market uh, I believe we're using a token script system. Flint has a different, has an electronic system where each um, vendor uh, is individually authorized to accept SNAP, and so uh, that that they don't use tokens at, at that market. Um, off the top of my head, I can't recall the the data about SNAP redemption um, increasing. So I guess I would defer. Um, to, to you uh, uh, to answer that part. Um, sure, this is Kylie from PHI. Um, so SNAP redemption data was collected at all of the participating farmers markets except for one, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, and the trend that we're seeing within Michigan farmers markets is that um, SNAP benefit redemption is on the decline, um, but that's a trend that we're seeing statewide in one of the farmers markets that participated in this project, there was a rather significant increase in um, SNAP benefit redemption. I believe it was over 300% increase. Mm -hmm. um, but that said, this is an area that we plan to evaluate further in the future. Um, and I know that there are other evaluations taking place right now to figure out why um, SNAP benefit redemption is on the decline statewide. So the next question is, who were the food navigators, professionals, paraprofessionals? Did they also recruit low-income individuals to come to the market, or did they just attempt to identify them once they're there? Um, and Sydney, I think this question is for you. Yeah. So, so the food navigators, um, came from a lot of different backgrounds uh, in terms of uh, professional, professionalism and education, uh, but they were all um, from the communities that uh, uh, were participating, participating in terms of the farmer's market. Um, they, so, so some of them, um, for their like, community partnerships, would go to specific Places where they knew um, low-income uh, SNAP-eligible individuals were um, were uh, and would put up would put up fires, would participate in um, programming directed uh, towards those those groups in order to to kind of increase the, the amount of uh, first-time uh, SNAP customers at the market, uh, but um, not it, it varied from navigator to navigator, um, and additionally, um, I see a couple other questions about training um, in in the question and answer. And so, the food navigators had a day long, um, eight hour training uh, where we went over all of their their requirements as part of this program, and you know how to um, perform nutrition education activities, how to you know, uh, uh, identify uh, community partners and SNAP ed partners, and so so that's that's kind of that's that's what they did, I guess. So the next question um, is also for you, Sydney, and um, the question is: If food for nutrition education activities were purchased at the market for food demonstrations, how is food safety addressed? For example, washing produce. Sure, that's a great question. So. Some of some of the markets had their own cooking demonstration license, and so the food navigator could operate under that um, and just perform the cooking demonstration um, same day uh, after they purchased that produce. Uh, there were other cases where a food navigator would, if the market had multiple days, the food navigator would purchase the produce um, a couple days before, go to a 
uh, licensed facility and pre-prepare uh, samples for um, the market where they were going to perform the cooking demonstration. And so they would have the samples um, pre-made like, pre, pre in little cups um, that were you know, produced on, in a licensed kitchen. Um, and then they would uh, have those ready for sampling and would then uh, do a food demonstration, a cooking demonstration, but not give out the product that was created as a result of that cooking demonstration. Instead, they would give out the little sample cups. And then still others, other navigators had um, things like food trucks, which had their own license, licensed chefs, um, people from restaurants come in and perform the cooking demonstration for them. And so that was how, that's kind of how they were um, following food safety and, and licensing requirements at the market. So Sydney, we have another question for you, and it is how did the navigators identify SNAP shoppers, such mm -hmm. as at the Double Up Food Box table? Sure, yeah. So a lot of the time we had the, the navigators in order to kind of identify those those shoppers would be at the 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 SNAP booth or the SNAP tent or wherever wherever that was in the market and just kind of had their own table next to them and would see that they were um, uh, they were there getting out um, tokens to use at the market and so that was one way that they identified shoppers. The other way is that they uh, the market managers would direct people who had questions about SNAP and Double Food Box and all of those food assistance benefits to the food navigator. And so the navigator and the market manager kind of worked together to kind of send, send uh, those customers uh, to the navigator as a resource. Um, the next question, Sydney, is also for you. Are there other community partners you would like to partner with besides SNAP-Ed? Definitely. Uh, there, yes. So there is a focus in this program on SNAP Ed uh, programmers. However, we do uh, emphasize to our food navigators that um, you know they aren't limited to just those uh, community to those partnerships. Uh, there are certainly other community partners are are welcome, and, and you know we encourage uh, navigators to. Um, uh, build those as well. It's just that because this is a, a SNAP-Ed program, that the SNAP-Ed um, partnerships are, are the ones that we focus on, but we're, we're definitely not um, excluding um, community partners that uh, are not SNAP-Ed programmers. So, Cindy, another question for you. How did you advertise or promote the use of the navigators at the market? That's a, sure, that's a great question. So. Um, we, to a certain extent, we left this up to the discretion of the market manager and the food navigator. Uh, so, so the navigators um, had uh, postcards uh, to hand out um, uh, that gave out information about the program, uh, but also, you know, there were, um, I, I saw some really like Facebook posts about the program and like, come and see our food navigator, so-and-so, um, if you have any questions or, or this person is having a demo, like a cooking demonstration, come check it out. So um, we are planning on having more resources for promotion this year about the program, uh, uh, and those will certainly, uh, I think, uh, help. But, but, you know, again, still, we're, we're uh, because we want this to reflect the community that the navigator and the farmer's market is in, we, we do leave that to a certain extent up to the, the navigators and the farmer's markets about how they want to promote the program in their community. Okay, um, so Sydney, I believe you already answered part of this question, but our next mm -hmm. question has to do with what and how much training that the navigators receive and were they paid? Someone else is also interested in knowing how much they were paid per week. Sure. So, uh, so again, the navigators did receive training. It was uh, a day-long training on nine to five. 
on um, food assistance programs in Michigan farmers markets, um, SNAP ed programming, nutrition education, the roles and responsibilities of the food navigator. Um, uh, just general uh, how to do programming at a farmers market. Uh, they were paid. Uh, they were paid last year ten dollars an hour. Um, I honestly I can't like off the top of my head tell you what that was weekly this year. Um, though well, it was ten dollars an hour, ten hours a week. So I guess it was a hundred dollars a week. So. This year, um, we have increased that. We are um, now at $12 an hour for 20 hours a week um, in the peak season, which for in Michigan is uh, May or June 1 through October 31. Um, and then in the off season, November 1 through May 31, uh, they will still be paid $12 an hour, but it will be for eight hours a week. Um, and so, I, I hope that answers that question. <laughs> Thank you, Sydney. Um, uh -huh. So, Sydney, someone also asked a question um, asking if are we the ones exchanging the benefits for tokens and we exchange the tokens with money for the farmers. So I think it would help if you could clarify the role of the Food Navigator in terms of uh, their help with the nutrition assistance. Sure. So, um, no. The food navigators, so, so so the food navigators are not allowed. They cannot operate a point of sale device at a farmers market. They they cannot um, swipe bridge cards for customers um, and give them tokens. They can take customers around and show them all of the things that they can use. Um, they can purchase with their tokens. They can show them all the different um, currencies and like the differences between those currencies. But they are not the point. They are not um, exchanging tokens. Uh, they are not reimbursing vendors. They are not um, uh, handling that currency. That that is something that food navigators. Um, it not only is it not part of their position description, but it's something that, as a SNAP programmer, they cannot do. So, Sydney, this next question is for you as well. Someone would like to know, what is Double Up Food Bucks? <laughs> so, Double Up Food Bucks is a SNAP incentive program uh, um, run by, or run by Terra Food Network, uh, which is a, a nonprofit. Um, and it's, uh, so curr it, currently, it's in, oh, it's in a lot of states now. But in, in Michigan, uh, it, it's in uh, over 140 markets. It's also in grocery stores and at farm stands. So Double Up Food Bucks as a SNAP incentive program, uh, when you buy, uh, when you take $20 off of your bridge card into tokens, uh, Double Up Food Bucks matches that. So you end up with $20 in SNAP and $20 in Double Up Food Bucks uh, tokens. And so those tokens can be used for uh, Michigan-grown fresh fruits and vegetables, um, and it you know helps uh, exp expand the food dollar of, of that SNAP customer. And if you are interested in more information, I think I can type it into this box. You can go to their website, and I'll put that in. So, Sydney, a follow-up question about Double Up is: What do you think about educating people on farmers market Double Up bucks when people get their checks? Um, I guess I'm not sure what is meant by check. Um, I if 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 the, if that's if it's like WIC, um, then WIC you can't you can't use double up feedbacks if you have WIC. It has it's a SNAP incentive program, so it's only um, it can only be um, for for SNAP dollars I'm at the market. Uh, so um, checks are not a part of, of double up food bucks, I guess. <laughs> Thank you, Sydney. Um, so I guess um, 
something that, that we did in this project was try to reach out to people who received SNAP benefits directly, so that may also be what that question refers to, and we did oh, yeah. um, okay. try to reach out to them and promote the program. Sure, yeah, add? I think I think if that's, if that's what they're referring to, I am, we are in full support of, you know, educating um, as many SNAP customers as possible in Michigan about all the places where they can um, you know, essentially double their money and use that money towards fresh, healthy fruits and vegetables. So, so yes, we'll support for sure um, in that in that aspect. Okay. So, um, I'll take the next question, and then Sydney, you can add anything else if you like. The next question is: Was there any negative feedback from market masters or vendors? Um, and I'll just say that as uh, in our evaluation. Some feedback that I would not consider negative, but perhaps um, feedback that identified areas for improvement was that there was some, um, uh, it could be useful to clarify the role of the food navigator, so that's why in the next steps um, we are planning to do some promotional materials that more um, directly describe the role of the food navigator, some market masters and um, did mention that it was unclear um, the role of the food navigator. Sydney, did you have anything to add to that? Um, I would, I would definitely agree with that. I think, um, especially in the beginning, there was some uh, confusion or um, a lack of clarity around the role, um, and I think that is part, part, partly because it, you know, is a new program. It was a new program, um, and and this year we're certainly um, trying to include market managers as much as they're able to. Um, they are able to participate in our monthly calls. They are able to participate and sit in on the training, um, and they have access to our the Dropbox folders and all the resources that the food navigators have. And so we've we've tried to additionally. Just spell out as explicitly as ex explicitly as we can um, what what as a, as a food navigator market we expect from the market manager and in turn what the market manager can expect from the food navigator. Great. Um, so another question we had um, are: Will all of the survey results be available online, and will this presentation be available in PDF or other formats? Um, and we are um, really excited that you're interested in seeing it in that format, but um, at this time, um, we would encourage you to refer to the Michigan Fitness Foundation's website for um, the presentation if they uh, do post it. We, we have no plans and we're not aware of any plans to post it at this time. Um. So someone also asked a question about the location of the six farmers markets, um, which Sydney described at the beginning, um, but uh, the person also asked about um, urban versus rural setting. Um, Sydney, maybe you could just briefly remind us about that. Sure, sure. So uh, again, like I said, all of the uh, uh, markets were located in more or less the lower half of the lower peninsula in Michigan. And so I think I would say um, one, two, three, probably four of the markets were more urban and three were more rural. So the three that were, would be more rural would be um, Adrian, uh, Lapeer, and oh, would be other Adrian this year. Oh, I like I am I am totally blanking on my markets, but uh, it was almost a 50-50 divide. I I would is what I would say, um, in terms of urban versus rural. Okay, thank you, Sydney. Mm -hmm. So um, another question is, if your market meets the eligibility to have a food navigator, what is the next step? And um, I'll just remind everyone that um, they can contact MIFMA directly 
Um, Sydney's spoken a lot about uh, the eligibility for the food navigators and things like that, so I would encourage you to reach out to them via their website. Um, and we'll also share a point of contact at the end. Sure, yeah. I would say if you are interested in participating in the Food Navigator program and if you are eligible or if you believe you are eligible, um, definitely uh, contact, contact NIFMA and specifically contact me. So the next question is, would you all consider this an emerging practice or practice or research tested? Um, and we would consider it an emerging practice in regards to the SNAP-Ed programming requirements. Um, and the next question is, are the nutrition education materials, for example, the scavenger hunt available to share? Um, and my understanding is that they are not, but Sydney, can you, can you please confirm? Yes. So, so they aren't available to share um, currently. I know, um, but but yeah, yeah. I will, yes. They're right now. They aren't available to to share out. But I would encourage um, you to contact Misma, and um, that seems to be the last question. So we will now um, show the contact information for Michigan Fitness Foundation. Michigan Farmers Market Association and the Public Health Institute. Feel free to contact any and all of us if you have any questions or would like to follow up with us about anything you heard about on this presentation. We would be very happy to speak with you. Um, so if there's not any other questions, um, which I don't see any more coming in, I think we will end the presentation now, and thank you so much for your time today, and we hope that you learned something and enjoyed our presentation.